Beautiful. One second. This week, people had the privilege of speaking with former President George W. Bush and his wife Laura at their home in Dallas. President Bush has a new book of military portraits to honor veterans who have served our country since 9-11. We had the chance to talk about his new book, his painting process, and the relationships he's forged with the courageous men and women of the military. For my 70th birthday, I wanted one gift, veterans to come down and ride. And we had a really fun time. These are men and women who I've gotten to know and really like. We just share a bond that is hard for people to understand. The only yeah. primary is two mm. reds, two yellows, blue and a white, sometimes black. George W. Bush started painting in 2012. It was a hobby that he had gotten the idea to start pursuing after a friend suggested he should read a book that Winston Churchill wrote called Painting as a Pastime. It's been really terrific, but a shock. <laughs> I would have never expected George to become an artist. Of course, she didn't think I was going to become president. No, I thought you'd, <laughs> there, he had a lot better chance of becoming president than becoming an artist. But um, he was totally agnostic to art before. I loved living with the White House collection of art. I was very interested. I visited the National Gallery and uh, all the museums um, often when we lived there. And George never did. And then, um, so I'm thrilled that he found this. I think it's really great. And now he's become a lot more interested in old paintings to artists, to other artists. Yeah, I've discovered, and it took a while to get there, that in order to paint, you've got to understand how others painted. And so I spent a lot of time looking at the paintings of my predecessors and have learned a lot. It's, a, it's been, an, it's been a life-changing experience for me. This is a learning experience. The presidency was a learning experience. And uh, this is yet another learning experience because you can't ever learn enough to be the kind of painter you really want to be. And so, uh, you know, I've worked hard all my life uh, and I worked hard painting. I think it's therapeutic to have gone 100 miles an hour to zero and then found a, you know, an additional passion. I mean, I was passionate about serving the country. This is a passion of mine now and that, that's therapy. Maybe I'm more centered or more sensitive. Uh, Yes, Laura. <laughs> As an artist, he notices things. The sky, for instance, he'll point out some beautiful sight uh, that he might not have pointed out before. But really, George needed a pastime. I mean, when you're president, you have every problem in the world on your desk. And the day you're not, it's over. I mean, when it's over, it's over. And so he was Wish desperate. I thought about saying He that, was I? desperate for a pastime. And, and I'm so glad he found this one. I'm not afraid to tell him if I think he should do something else. Yeah, like the time I tried to paint her. It's in the closet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> President Bush had painted a series of portraits of world leaders, and a friend suggested he try something new and paint portraits of people who weren't well known. So in 2015, Bush decided to paint some of the wounded warriors he'd come to know over the years. It took about a year or so to do it, but I am a project painter. In other words, uh, I've painted uh, pets for a while, and I painted hats for a while, and I painted cacti for a while, and lilies. And so when I got this idea of painting uh, the portraits of these uh, warriors, it consumed me. I mean, I painted a lot to get it done. He ended up painting 98 men and women, which are now featured in his book, Portraits of Courage. The process is to generally paint from a photo, sketch it up on a canvas in broad outlines, and then start from there and just watch it evolve. You really never know what the final product is gonna look like till you get there. And, uh, and so you just paint. I was thinking about their troubles or their joys, and uh, hopefully the paintings reflected that. Each painting is accompanied by an inspiring story, and all the proceeds from the book will go to the George W. Bush Presidential Center and its Military Service Initiative. Some person as an art critic looks at this, I, you know, they're probably going to find uh, ways not to, you know, not to like it, but they, they got to like the fact I put a lot of effort into it and I care deeply about the vets. Uh, I was a little self-conscious about it, not self-conscious, I was a little concerned that some of them would look at it and say, that's me? When I paint them, my admiration for them even increases. I was of the Vietnam era. Uh, we had a draft. These men and women volunteered. I was amazed that so many did so. I can remember worrying about troop levels, and yet uh, citizen after citizen stepped up to serve. And so when I paint them, uh, it's less to do about me and more to do about honoring them. 
I get asked all the time, do I feel guilty about what happened to him? The answer is no, I don't. Uh, I made the decision, the best decision I could make. I, uh, it was important for our, the defense of our country. I, am, I knew going into war that somebody would get hurt. That, was the, that, that made the whole decision so much graver. Um, on the other hand, uh, Laura and I have met hundreds who have said, I would do it again, Mr. President. Uh, there are some in that book who uh, lost a limb and went back into combat. I'm honoring a unique group of Americans and we're very fortunate that we have citizens such as these men and women because it's not just serving in the military, they're going to serve their communities in other ways as well and uh, particularly when we help them uh, either find a job or help them with their invisible wounds. President Bush spoke of one portrait in particular, the one of Michael Rodriguez, or Rod as he calls him. I'm thrilled with my painting of Rod, by the way. When I first came up with the idea, I ran into Rod, and he didn't have his dark glasses on uh, for the first time in a long time. And I, his eye is just spectacular, the, the prosthetic eye he has. And I said, Rod, I got to look at your eye, man. I mean, this thing is great. I want to get the colors right because I'm painting it. <laughs> and he was slightly taken aback. When you look at his career in the military, you say, this He's a warrior. On the other hand, he's got this uh, sweet soul to him. And uh, he's struggling, but he's getting a lot better. And, uh, and that's why I wrote the book, to talk about people like Rod. Uh, you know, these uh, veterans are a tremendous national asset. I mean, think about Rodriguez. This is a guy who, you know, has been all over the world. He understands teamwork and discipline, taking risk. And uh, if given the proper help, uh, and he, he, he's going to continue to contribute to the country. But Rod will be the first to tell you, in order to get help, you have to ask for it. And that's one of the real problems we have. A lot of these vets get stigmatized. And they say, I don't want anybody to know, I'm struggling. You can't help a person who's not willing to be helped. So one of the messages in this book is it's courageous to talk about uh, your injuries. Those you can see and those you can't see. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. After 9-11, I didn't sleep very well. I kept playing that movie through my head, you know, just over and over and over again. There was a lot of uncertainty during that time. I and mean, people look back at it and say, well, it must have been obvious what to do, but it wasn't at that moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep that much that night. I think everyone remembers how right after 9-11, the country felt so unified. We all seemed as if we were on the same team, and that certainly has dissipated now. But recently, President Bush was at the center of what many would consider a moment of unity during the contentious 2016 presidential campaign. There's a photo of Michelle Obama and President Bush embracing at the opening ceremony for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. She kind of likes my sense of humor, I guess. I mean, anybody who likes my sense of humor, I immediately like. And <laughs> I needle her a little bit, and you know, I'm a, around them fairly lighthearted. I mean, they're around serious people all the time. And we just took to each other. I sat next to her at Nancy Reagan's memorial. I can't remember where else I've sat next to her, but you know, I probably have a few wisecracks and she seemed to like it okay. And when I saw her, it was a genuine expression of affection. The New York Times called it the embrace scene around the world. And the Bushes even hinted at possibly working with both the Obamas further down the road. Uh, I think she, they're interested in, in a, so also doing things with our troops, of course, now in their afterlife, mm -hmm. as I call it. It's going to take them a while to find their footing and figure out how they're going to do what they want to do. If there's a way to be symbiotic, we'll do so. In spite of the deep divisions we're seeing throughout our country these days, President Bush is hopeful. Love Trump's hate! Love Trump's hate! I'm optimistic about uh, where we'll end up. I mean, yes, I don't like the racism and I don't like the name calling and I don't like the people feeling alienated. Nobody likes that. On the other hand, we've been through these periods before. And we've always had a way to come out of it. I'm more optimistic than some. It happens every time. People campaign and then the job's different when they get in there. And the job has a way of bringing a reality to each president's situation. And uh, that's going to happen now. When President Obama got elected, friends would call him, you must speak out. You must do this. You must do that. And, uh, and it turns out 
other people are doing the same thing this time. And I felt it, I, I didn't feel like speaking out before. I didn't want to complicate the job, and I'm not going to do this this time. However, at the Bush Center, we are speaking out. Uh, we've got this Veterans Initiative. We've got a cervical cancer initiative on the continent of Africa, which really speaks to the notion that, you know, we're a blessed nation and uh, we ought to help to the extent we can others. We're uh, leading democracy movements. We're helping women in Egypt and Tunisia, as well as young Burmese. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. We've started a scholarship amongst Korean Americans for North Korean uh, prison escapees here in the United States. We've got a leadership program. We've got a collaborative effort with Mexico and Canada where we bring private and public sector together to talk about how to continue to facilitate uh, this common market that's developing, which will enable our country to compete in the long run. We've had immigration ceremonies at the Bush Center. I mean, so there's a lot of ways to speak out, but it's really through programs and actions that are very important to, uh, that defend values and ideals that are important to Lauren May. In terms of painting, I, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, an idea will pop in my head and I'll probably spend a year and a year and a half, you know, pursuing it. Um, in the meantime, I'll just, you know, paint a landscape here and a landscape there. It's amazing how time heals some, uh, <laughs> some anxieties. It's, uh, uh, I'm very comfortable. I did what I did. I wrote a book about it. If people really want to understand why I did what I did, read the book. But over time, history will judge. And. Uh, in the meantime, you know, we're, we got a good life here and we're, we've got some policy initiatives that are important to us and I can always retreat to my canvas.